Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is a COVID-19 update, June 2nd, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All videos can be found on rubinfo.com slash blog. Here are the current trajectories. You can see the United States is overwhelming everybody else. They have almost 1.9 million cases now. There's almost 6.5 million cases worldwide. Here are the reported cases per million population. You look at some of the trajectories. There's Italy, Spain, France, Germany, all doing fairly well. United Kingdom, still uptick. United States and Canada, again, still growing. Here, the percentage of deaths, highest, is in France at 15.29%. The lowest, Germany, at 4.71%. Here are the deaths over the last five days. The top number is the most recent day. The following numbers are the subsequent days. The number in brackets is the highest daily death total. And you can see, really, in most places, deaths have fallen. In Italy, their maximum was 919. They're down to 55. Spain, you can see the numbers there. Same in Germany. France, significant drop. United Kingdom, a significant drop. United States, also a significant drop. Canada's max was 222. Um, but uh, if you look at the other uh, days, we've, we've dropped, but we're still grumbling along. So deaths are down in most, if not all, countries. Here are the deaths per million population. Some of the thing note here that Canada has definitely diverged from Germany. The new cases per day, and I think it's safe to say everybody's now roughly over the hump, although we're going to look at some interesting data. So here's Italy doing very well. Spain also doing very well. Germany, excellent. France, also doing really well. United Kingdom have dropped, which is a nice sign. United States, They've dropped, but there's been a little bit of a flattening and curl up towards the end. We'll have to watch this. And Canada, we can see we've also dropped, which is good news. For some people in Canada, but not for all. I'm going to show you why this number is a little bit misleading. Remember, COVID is a regional disease. Here are the daily deaths in Italy. In Spain, there's a correction in Spain. That's why you've got that large negative number. But they are dropping. Germany, doing great. France. United Kingdom. United States has also dropped, but also curled a little bit at the end again there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And here's Canada. Again, we have dropped, but have also plateaued. Now, the big uh, graph there, bar there, number at 70, number 79, is deaths that were missed. So um, they're accounted for now, but hopefully we'll continue to fall. Now, so here's the new cases per day in Canada, as I said. Now, we have fallen, um, but not in all regions. Okay, so if we peaked, some places, not all. And here are the deaths. Are we grumbling? Well, probably not because we had a, a bunch of deaths that were unaccounted and we've added them in. So we're probably falling. Here are the provincial cases of COVID-19. Canada now with over 90,000. Quebec, over 50,000. Ontario closing in at 30,000. And British Columbia and Alberta still both under 10,000 and doing very well. If we look at the new cases today, here's Ontario, and this is an important graph to look at because Ontario's numbers are still sitting over 400 new cases per day. Now, that said, its testing has expanded in Ontario, which might account for some of this. Here's Quebec, and look at the numbers in Quebec. They've certainly dropped. Here's British Columbia in green and Alberta in black, both doing fantastic with both uh, 30 or less cases per day. Here's Saskatchewan and Manitoba, both doing great. Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. There was a little bit of a bump in New Brunswick. Nothing too significant, though. The territories, uh, Northwest Territories, Nunavut and uh, Yukon, uh, have not, had no new cases since the last report. Put this in perspective, Ontario has about three to 400 new cases a day. Quebec is about 250 to 400. British Columbia and Alberta have about 10 to 30, and every other province has single-digit new cases per day at most, and many have no new cases. So it's really Ontario and Quebec driving the Canadian landscape. Um, they've expanded testing in Ontario. I'm not sure if that's what's driven the cases up a little bit. We'll have to keep an eye on this. If we look at the cumulative deaths, there's Canada with over 7,000. British Columbia and Alberta are both quite low. Ontario with just over um, 2,000 deaths and Quebec uh, approaching about 5,000. So the big question in everybody's mind is, will we have a second wave? Now let's think of the virus COVID spreading like starting a fire. To start a fire, we need lots of small kindling, like the picture on the right. If we put lots of kindling, 
crowded together in a fire pit, confined space, all together in close contact, the chances are we're going to get that fire started. If the kindling stays apart, or if it's windy, or there's not enough of the kindling, then the fire isn't likely to start. You think of humans as COVID kindling. If humans occupy crowded, confined spaces and are in close contact, the chances of lighting the fire of COVID-19 is going to be much higher. If we keep humans apart, not in crowds and out of confined spaces, then theoretically we should be able to reduce the spread. Well, let's look at Scandinavia and see what they've done there, and is there any evidence of this? Scandinavia consists of four main countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark, and some would include Iceland in there as well. But we'll focus on these four. Okay, here's the cases per day in Denmark, okay? And you can see now they've got, you know, under 50 cases, new cases per day. Here's Norway. Again, Norway has done really well, okay? Under 20 new cases per day. Here's Finland. Finland's doing great as well. And this is Sweden. And Sweden uh, has had 750 new cases yesterday and averaging roughly about five or 600 new cases a day. So we can see social distancing really works. If we look at Denmark, Finland, and Norway, they really did a good job of social distancing. Where Sweden was a little bit more lax, they kept their schools open, their bars and restaurants open, they still did actually followed some social distancing rules. But if you look at the number of cases, Sweden has had almost 39,000 cases, and the others have had no more than 11, or sorry, no more than 12,000. If you look at the cases per million population, Sweden's had 3,800 where the highest in Denmark was 2,000. And in Canada, now we've had 92,000 cases, but our cases per million is certainly less than Sweden at 2,450. If you look at the deaths now, Denmark, Finland, and Norway have had under 1,000 deaths, almost under 500 each. Sweden has had 4,468. And that translates to anywhere from 50 to 100 deaths per million population in Denmark, Finland, and Norway, and 443 in Sweden. Putting that perspective in Canada, we've had 196 deaths per million population, or 7,395 deaths. So we can see distancing really works. But what's the impact of social distancing? Well, why do we do it? We want to reduce the spread of infection. We don't want to overwhelm our healthcare system. But it's not benign. It impacts other areas of the healthcare system. What are we seeing? We're seeing delayed testing. It's difficult to get MRIs or scans done right now. We're seeing delayed surgeries. We're seeing delayed treatment of medical illness and people come to the hospital much sicker than they should be. We also see a significant economic impact for many businesses and families. And also there's the effects of social isolation uh, on its own. And I'm sure you can think of many other reasons why social distancing isn't benign. But the big question is how do we balance the impact of social distancing with the spread of COVID-19? And the answer really has to be a societal answer. And there's been many different approaches across the world. From the United States, we've had a very radical approach to opening everything and putting economic growth ahead of everything else, versus other places throughout the world who have put human life ahead of economic growth. So will we have a second wave? Well, if we can responsibly social distance, we should be able to control the spread of COVID-19. So for me, when I look at the numbers, it's difficult in Canada to anticipate a huge second wave, barring there's no viral mutations as long as we continue to responsibly social distance. And what does that mean, responsibly social distance? Okay, So avoiding close contact, avoiding confined spaces and crowded places, we all still need to do this. Okay, We can't have social interactions. They need to be, though, not in close contact, confined spaces or crowded. They can be outside and we can enjoy each other's company. We need to wash your hands well. Don't forget to do that. I think a lot of people have forgotten that. And often, and get a lot of hand sanitizer if you can. When I'm in my clinic and I see a patient, I wash my hands three times for every patient, twice with soap and once with hand sanitizer. Wear a mask. Everybody should be wearing masks. Why? Because it prevents viral particles from spreading. It might have some impact. It's, ben it's benign. It's not going to hurt you. And it also reminds you that there's still a virus out there. and We still have to be careful. So wear a mask, folks. Now look at through the world here. We see ongoing slower growth now. The United States... 165,000 new cases since I last did this, 21% increase. Canada second, 14,000 new cases, 18% increase. And the United Kingdom, 31,000 or 13% increase. If you look at Italy, Spain, Germany, and France, they're all under 10% and almost all under 5% growth. A couple of notable exceptions here, Brazil, unfortunately, is uh, struggling. 
They have over half a million cases now. Russia has 423,000 reported cases. A couple of spots I'm watching in the United States is California. Look at this, they're grumbling along. And Texas. You know, they like everything big in Texas, but I tell you, you don't want COVID-19 that big because that usually doesn't end well. So hopefully Texas can get this under control. But with what's going on in the United States, um, it's really kind of a, a bad situation down there for many reasons. So remember, it's really important that everyone continues to hold the line. We don't, we don't want to get lax a day school now. It's probably okay to socially uh, interact, but outside, small groups. Again, you can get a piece of history from Collins Colliers in London, Ontario. They're selling hoodies and t-shirts online to support small businesses and frontline workers. And they've been given out a portion of the profits to local uh, businesses. Go to collinscolliers.com under Canada Strong. Get yours today. They're awesome. Get your mask, folks. Everybody needs a mask. I don't care if you make one out of cotton. You put a scarf around your head. Get something that's going to prevent droplets from spreading. These masks you can get from physiotherapyroom.com. Go talk to Bill. Remember, do your part. Flatten the curve. Stay home. Stay safe. And please, please save lives.